Hello, hello and good evening. Welcome to Sports Friday where we give you all the things that have been happening in the world of sports throughout the week. Now, I'm your host, Eddie Ogoe. And of course, I'd like to say it again. Welcome and very much welcome to Sports Friday. Now, joining me on set are my analyst, or rather my guest, when you're say, to break down each and everything that has been happening in the world of sports throughout the week. Now, on my far end, Nicola Adams Davids <laughs> will be joining us today and will be helping us to understand more about the FKF elections and even more as we continue with the show and near me we have Hafsa Mohammed yes who'll be joining us for the first time but will be helping us also because she has a lot to say and I will be hoping that you all have the ears to listen now to begin with I want to start with the story of the FKF elections now FKF elections is finally seems to be underway the FKF electoral board has today closed the windows for submission of delegates to vote for the upcoming elections the board will now go through the list and publish a preliminary registry tomorrow on Saturday February 29th a two-day window for disputes will, in regards to voters' registration will be then opened. If need be, appellants who do not get satisfaction in the board's decision can further seek resources from the appeal committee on March the 2nd. The final list of delegates is set to be published on March 3rd. Yes, 3rd of March. County elections have been scheduled for March 14th, while the national polls are set to be held on March the 27th uh, this year. Now, guys, I hope you had a good week. What an easy apple yeah, it good. seems like I just went through everything and without even knowing. <laughs> Your week was awesome. Cool. Yeah. It was awesome, yeah. I am very, very happy for you guys. I don't even know what you guys went through. But <laughs> to get on with it, let us start with this fact. Okay, Hafsa, let me start with you. Do you think that there is enough information in regards to FKF to the public? Like, their dealings and the... Do you think there's enough transparency with their dealings? I don't really think so. You don't? Yeah. And why would you say so? I think, uh, I think a lot of information is being withheld. I think they should be... Uh, a platform in which they, they should release a lot of information to the public about how the football is uh, going on, what is going on with the football, and all that. Now, Adams, I, I asked Ops this question because precisely mm -hmm. because I know you guys have a Facebook page, you have mm -hmm. a Twitter page, I don't even know if you have an Instagram page, but I do know you have a we website. Do. You guys have all these things, but mm -hmm. yet people are still not aware about the things that you do. And one, one would say maybe it's due to their maybe negligence. Mm -hmm. But others would say that you guys haven't advertised yourself enough to actually let the public be aware of the things that is happening with the FKF. Now, I wanted to start with that before I went to the election case mm -hmm. because I know that's one of the things that I wanted to discuss today. Mm -hmm. But what do you think, do you guys have a way of actually allowing us in, in future to know more about the things that you do? Okay, um, let me just uh, openly say the media team of the FKF has been doing a lot on ground currently. I know, I know. And um, we have a, there's a Facebook page, there's an Instagram page, and there's a, uh, what's it called? Um, a Twitter page. Yeah. And most of the times, also there are other journalists who get, I was called, this documents mm -hmm. and also spread out. Because the only thing I'll actually say is airtime is not given to sports in this country. So most of the time, we are out, maybe probably the time, it's maybe like uh, 9.50 something, that's when sport news comes up and probably you're sleeping. But to be very honest with you, guys have the materials going on and it's every day the media team of the FKF as much as possible to spread out this news that this is what's happening and this is not what's happening. Yeah. So you, you you would say it's due to negligence that yeah. the information... Due to negligence of some people who do not want to get involved in sport thinking it's maybe biased and that's why they're out of there. But funny enough, if they come in closer to like, okay, what's happening on ground? Actually, the media team is so ready to open up what's happening. And have, have you ever visited one of the pages? No, I think I think a lot of Kenyans are more interested in the national sports rather than the local sports. When it comes to, yeah, when it comes to Kenyan I think football. it's negligence. Like <clears throat> yeah, people don't people don't know about the sports in Kenya, but you'll find everyone knows about the sports internationally. Mm -hmm. But yeah. in Kenya, it's the same. In Kenya, because once they, yeah. they, they just go up, the okay, people. they go up, uh, yeah. in EFC. They just know Gorma, yeah, yeah. FC Leopard, it's bad. Yeah. Guys are not really pushing through yeah. to see how the national team is working and to even subscribe, to even like the pages, so that, you know, when you like a page and other things, the news keep coming to you. True. The notifications just keep coming. Even if it's good or bad, you get notifications. True. But guys are not liking, guys are not doing this. So at the end of the day, when you create a Facebook page and it's out there, and it's your duty to like it and you're, you're liking it, it's not my fault. 
Now, Agrinio, Adams, yeah. let's talk elections. Now, these elections were supposed to be held last year, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, due to some uh, one or two things, uh, there have been some delays to it. And uh, it has gone to a point, to, it actually got to a point where FIFA was involved in it. Mm -hmm. I yeah. remember. There was a time FIFA was involved in it. And uh, right now, you guys, at least, uh, I would say you're well underway since mm -hmm. uh, now the, the, the gates were closed today yeah. for, the, for anyone who vi wishes to vie. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and... Uh, I want, you to, I want you to explain it to us, how the process will go through it. Because one thing I know is, uh, first, uh, the people are to submit, mm -hmm. and then uh, the, the registry will go through the list, mm -hmm. and then they will publish the list, mm -hmm. and then from there, the elections will be held. Yeah. Now, that much we understand, but let's start with the reason why it has taken this long, because this is something that has taken quite too long than expected, in fact, than schedule itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the elections were to take place, as you said, last year, Yes. and uh, it did. But at the end of the day, it was nullified. Yeah. And we we're told to go back to the ballot. And it, it's okay, no problems. And we did. Now, at the end of the day, guys are to resubmit and other things, which it has been open, and guys have done that. Uh, last week, Saturday, we witnessed uh, Nick Wenda now coming in to via, like this is, yeah, he came in uh, to via the position of a, pre a president again. And uh, other guys also came in. It's no problem. So normally the election, it starts from the sub-county to the county level and now to the national level. So now uh, the, the, what's it called, the KPL teams and the NSL teams are now responsible for the national, uh, what's it called, elections. While the sub-county teams, we have other county leagues who are down there who now takes care of nomin nominating guys now for, the count for that uh, sub-county level and the county level. Well, I hope all will be well in the elections and this time it won't be nullified and the results will be published for the public to know. And for those who do not know much about what FKF does, please do subscribe to their Facebook or Instagram page or rather Twitter, Twitter page, page to know more information about what's happening in the world as well. Now, let's get to the next story. Now, FKF do have a lot in hand for them as Mashimeji Dabi now is in doubt due to lack of venue. Now, due to lack of venue, the much-awaited Mashimeji Derby between arch rivals AFC Lopez and Gormaya slated for the next weekend is now in limbo. The game, which is designated a high-risk match by the KPL, can only be held at Moe International Sports Center or the Nyayo National Stadium. Nyayo National Stadium is closed for renovation, while Moe International Sports Center is certainly not available for AFC Lopez to use after Kenya Sports banned them for playing there in November following damages that were view, uh, that were done in the venue, facilities attributed in the Ingwe, by the Ingwe fans, which is pretty much normal, so to say. Now, Super Cup match between the two rivals uh, was played in Afra Stadium, Nakuru, in 2018. But the KPL is only considering having this match after receiving an official request from the AFC Lopez and the venue passing security assessment. Now, from what I, I, I have just gathered is this. AFC Lopez is pretty much the big reason why the game is in yes, limbo at the moment. Yes. This is because <laughs> they don't want to pay the fine. <laughs> so you guys, please do explain to me. What do we do? Okay, have some, take over. First of all, they don't want to pay the fine. They, are, they have been told they, they're supposed to pay a fine of two million so that they can be allowed to play. But how do they pay the fine? If right now, even the FKF or Leona last week, I'm going to say, I want to pay the fine for the Premier League. You see the thing there? Okay, let her just finish. Uh, okay, okay continue, just finish. Continue. I think this is all the Ministry of Sports. Ministry of Sports. The sports is just, yeah. To my own spaces, we can't continue looking for who to like just put in the bag. The truth is, as <laughs> and Gomaya, it's a derby. It's yeah. a derby. Those guys are always I mean, fighting. We know them. <laughs> and I wish the last derby at actually Moi, we were there, we witnessed, actually it was crazy. And funny enough, FC Lopez started, the whole staff, understand? And now chairs were ripped off and thrown. Yeah, Actually, the whole space where FC Lopez fans were staying, the chairs were ripped off. That of Gomaya was a bit okay. So at the end of the well, day, if, won. yes. <laughs> so if at the end of the day, the FKF decides, or the ministry or whoever decides they should pay for that damages, they have the right to pay for it. If not, it's up to them. Ah, they should pay. They have to be responsible. Yeah. Bro, okay. football is business. Be responsible for the damages. It gets damaged. Funny enough, the guys who are coming, the next generation, cannot use those facilities. 
True, true, true. Yeah. I do understand that extent. But here's one thing. Okay, this is one of the matches that is highly watched in Kenya, and this is one of the matches that is highly anticipated when the league starts. So one way or another, they have to find a way to actually allow people to watch this match because if this match does not go through, then you do have another scrutiny coming along. So what do they do after this? What 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 measures can be taken to actually do this? Okay, rather, even if so, what measures can be taken to actually avoid such circumstances? And we will get back to the money issue. Don't, don't mm -hmm. think I've forgotten yeah. that. So, so. I, think, uh, I think the treasurer, the treasurer assured people that the match will be held two weeks from now. But it's not confirmed, but he assured people. He assured people. But uh, I think, as he said, I think she, they should just pay the damages. But what, where because do they get the money from? Okay, you see, there's know. gate fees, you understand? Yeah. I don't know who is home, who is away. You know, I, I was I was doing a story on mm -hmm. AFC Lopens quite a while back, and there's one thing I actually noticed is the fact that AFC Lopens said that uh, they need their matches to be brought back to the National Stadium because mm -hmm. playing in other stadiums is really putting them in a mess. This is because the last time they said they recorded the highest amount of fee through the gate post was 5,000 shillings. Now you tell me, in a one match, <laughs> if you get 5,000 shillings, that how is, is it supposed so to be? That's, to that's, to that's just a lie. Players. It's poor it's politics, lie. man. How, how much is the ticket? Let's just use this, huh? <laughs> 200 bob per, per, ticket. per person. And you have You're telling me 85,000 bob. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's, that's, Even that's if politics. Nyai was open for them today, 85,000. They say they, okay, they, 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 they have been playing their matches in Machakos, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, they were saying that uh, their fans are having a hard time traveling to Machakos to go watch the mm -hmm. game, especially considering some of the games are being played uh, in the midweek. Bro, I'll actually tell you that if their fans are complaining, they are not diehard fans. They, 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 they are not diehard fans. They they, those aren't fans. Let they them travel. just stay. They, they should, they should, they should they go travel. from here to Busia <laughs> yeah. just to watch a match. They yeah. <laughs> those are diehard fans. If you say, probably, you see, uh, let me just. Do Actually, do, you support, uh, do you support a Kenyan team? Uh, no. You don't? <laughs> no. <laughs> you do not support any Kenyan team? Yeah. So Why do you support a Kenyan team? I, I, I don't have. I've never been interested because I don't like the, the politics. That is involved. involved in the sports industry in Kenya. But there is politics everywhere. No, even but the, no. <laughs> <laughs> the politics is too much. How do they say they get five thousand from tickets? How? But it's annoying, yeah. man. It's annoying. It's annoying indeed. I would say the <laughs> same. And uh, we do hope that Mashimi Jida will be played. Me more than anyone because I am a trooper, my friend, and I would really like to see that game be played. And, uh, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to more stories, and we'll be updating you as we get more information in regards to that match. Now, moving on to the next story, a little bit of Premier League and international story. Now, the Premier League has revealed plans to launch its official Hall of Fame with first two players to be inducted next month the hall of fame will be recognized and uh, will be recognized and celebrated at the exceptional skills and talent of those who have graced the premier league since inception in 1992 now how many of you were born in 1992 question tafakari lababu now as we continue one of the main conditions uh, they have set forward is candidate must have retired and only Players in the Premier League career, uh, players' Premier League career is considered. The first two inductees will be announced on a special event on March 19th, alongside the shortlist of additional nominees, which fans will be able to vote or for future inclusion. Now, this is the first time the Premier League is doing this. And mm. personally, I was actually surprised. I actually used to believe that there is a whole of, of fame yeah. in, in, in the Premier League. So, mm -hmm. for them to actually come out and tell us that in the Maracos, I was surprised. But Let's start with you guys. You're a Chelsea fan. You're a Liverpool fan, right? Yes. Yeah, who now, <laughs> as a Chelsea fan, <laughs> as, as a true Chelsea fan, one who would walk from here to, to London to actually go watch a match. Yeah, I wish. As, <laughs> as a Chelsea fan, which player from the players that have all played in the Premier League from Chelsea mm -hmm. would you actually feel needs to be in this list? Um, I would actually just, if we were to vote and yeah. the name was there, Makaleli. Cloud Macalet. He was my all-time player then. If if I was to speak on on behalf of Chelsea fans, <laughs> I think there is no greater player that has played in Chelsea and than Didier Drogba. Hmm. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> As a Liverpool fan, I I will go for Stevie Gerrard. Stevie Gerrard. Yeah. Now, I ask these questions because there are there are very very many people who were not born in 1992 and don't know more, don't know much about their history <laughs> or the history of the clubs that they support. Now, as an Arsenal fan, there are a lot of players that have played in Arsenal, and if I was to choose one, well, of course, top of my head would obviously go to Thierry Henry, but still, yeah. there are a lot of players in your team that have played, or rather in my team that have played, that <laughs> would, be, would make that list. Awesome. And one of them would be Patrick Vieira. I would also go for... Uh, uh, Wow, Wako Wenger as Junior and I mean, there are so many of them. But I think 
let, let, let us talk about these people. Now, these are people who have played in... Now, the, the condition is only your Premier League career is conceded. Mm. Now, this works very well for Drogba because actually it's only in Chelsea that he ever did anything important. There's also Thierry Henry. Thierry Henry, no, also... Thierry Henry won the Champions League when he was in Barcelona, so mm. you see that has actually oh. become... <laughs> I think, how about Alan? Alan Shearer. Yeah, yeah, yeah Alan is one of the... Con yeah, Alan Shearer is one of them. But uh, when, when you look at it, like, when, for instance, you look at Steven Gerrard. Mm -hmm. Gerrard won... Five, five, Premier, five Champions League, Champions but never League. won a Premier League. Mm. But his career, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to look at the medal. You're supposed to look at the goals, his contribution to that. You, you see, when you Premier say League. that, it does remind me something mm -hmm. that uh, Mikel Ateta said this week. Uh, when people were saying, Obama Young, uh, he's a great striker, but he's not a great because he has not won any yeah. single in London. And he told them, um, people are already considering Harry Kane mm -hmm. a great in England, yet Harry Kane has not mm -hmm. won any silverware at the moment. But you know England love their own. They market their own. But you cannot dis 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 disrupt the fact that Hurricane is a great. Hurricane yeah, has done things player. that most strikers have not done in a very long time. Yep. In fact, that time, mm. <laughs> anyway, uh, this was a very, very interesting topic. And uh, I was discussing it with some people that I know. And one thing that uh, appeared to me is most people do not even know the greats of their teams. And, and, and uh, today, even in the studio, before we started this show, uh, there were two guys arguing like... Uh, <laughs> Don't tell me it's Hillary. Hillary had a great one. Now, still on international story, we do have the Champions League that actually happened this week, and it was very, very interesting. A lot of upsetting results to most people who do tend to bet. When you're betting, you can put a person, but I'm sorry for that. I couldn't do much about that. Let's discuss your greatest. Okay, which was the greatest disappointment for the week? Was it Juventus losing or was it, was it uh, Madrid losing? Mine was just, uh, to be very honest with you, it was the game between Napoli and, and Barcelona. Napoli and Barcelona, that yes. was your... That was your, 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 your. I was actually just veering for Barcelona to just treat yeah. them and <laughs> these guys played. <laughs> Oh my god, this is yeah. very interesting. So he was in the Napoli and then the Barcelona. Yeah. Now, me, I wasn't shocked about the Napoli and Barcelona because uh, in real sense, uh, B Barcelona never has a great time when they go to Italy. In Italy yeah. They always have a bad time in Italy. I don't know why. Especially when it's AC Milan. Mm. It's always a bad result. Mm. But I was surprised if I, if I was to speak uh, total honesty, I was surprised with the Man City and uh, Real Madrid one because mm. Man City were defending like almost throughout and uh, they actually managed to, to win, uh, which is not easy. But if you see the, if you see the game but between Man City and Madrid, Madrid is actually not on form this season. Oh, but then again, even if Madrid was on form, Madrid has a bad record with the English teams. Arsenal won in that ground, Liverpool won in that ground, so it's really not a good day for Madrid. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's a normal day for Madrid, in fact, mm. to say the least. But I think Madrid has not been able to replace Ronaldo. That's their problem. So... So we do have the Barcelona match, which was very interesting, by yeah. the way. Uh, I was surprised by the results myself uh, because I had, I had hoped because Messi, Messi was on form before mm, that match. Messi was, was in good, yeah. good form. And we all know when Messi is in good form, where Barcelona performs its best. But what, 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 what was the biggest uh, letdown of the game throughout? Uh, that game, actually, I'll actually give, it, uh, give the, the credit to the coach. Of Nap Napoli, Napoli was his yeah. name. Um, the Naples coach. Yes, okay. because he's really done. If you see the game they were playing, it's like a counter. They defend all on their line. They defend behind them. When they get the ball, they open up. When okay. they lose the balls, now they close up. So it was very difficult for Barcelona to play. Uh -huh. And you see Messi, he can't play alone. He needs these guys also to help him give him the passes. But I, I, believe, really I, believe, I believe one of the biggest problems Messi is facing right now is the fact that he does not have his support team that he is used to throughout. Like the, the players that he's used to playing with are not mm. around. And now he's forced to play with new players and he's forced to adapt in their ways just as much as they adapt in, in his, his ways. Way. Yeah. But after, what was your dis biggest disappointment? Okay, I think uh, I, I was not disappointed because, oh. because Barcelona mm -hmm. got an away goal. And they are going back home. So I think, I think Baka got this. Spoken like a Barcelona fan. Fine. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I think, I think they got this because they're going home and Napoli will not be able to beat them at home. I think so. Stranger things have happened in Chelsea. They might yeah, just need to hold. Have, I think Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Not we don't have the Chelsea much. Yeah. Yeah. But, but Bayern, Nick. That is. Okay, oh. what happened? But you just know when it comes to Bayern and Chelsea, if you've been following like the German league, I you would see that Bayern has just been oozing Bayern. goals out. Bayern is Lewandowski is on point, like he's on he's on form. Nabri. So I was actually expecting like five nil. So for yeah. a three, 
Ah, it's okay. To not concede in the first half. Okay. First half was an <laughs> achievement for. And Chelsea. And Chelsea yeah. I don't know. We have small guys play. We have small boys play. Kids. We're just trying to like, yeah, yeah. groom the the kids for next season. F first things first. Let, let's let's take away the small small boys, small small small. Thank you, really. Factor. That, that, that factor <laughs> we have to remove it totally and completely. And this is because I remember there were times Arsenal were used to say that we have kids, we have kids, and people used to say, it. <laughs> <laughs> but they are playing. <laughs> They're no longer kids. But yes, at least yesterday, they're under contract, you so they're were no trashed, kids. man, yesterday. No, <laughs> but uh, there's one thing I actually saw mm. about the game. I think mm. you guys wasted some chances that you yeah. could have made the most of. When you're playing a team like Barcelona mm. or Bayern Munich, mm -hmm. teams like do like to dominate the ball. Mm -hmm. One thing you need to understand is the small chances that you get, you need to make the most make of. Use of it, I remember yeah. one game, or rather, let me not go there. Please Still, don't. Do on Juventus and Leon. Leon. That, one was a, that one was a shocker. Yeah. Seeing that uh, the Juventus had their full squad. In fact, I don't think there was any important player that was away. Mm. They were all there. All, all, the, all yeah. the important players were around. Yeah. And, and what happened? Like, did you guys even watch that game? I'll be very, very honest with you. I did, I did the first half. <laughs> and the way Ronaldo was playing, I just knew it wasn't his day. And it looked like it seems Juventus have decided to put the games on Ronaldo and Dybala. You can't just have all your games on these two guys. So once, you see, like what the coach of, uh, what's it called, Leon said, he said, what I just did was, do not foul anybody in the box for Ronaldo to score. Well, they and that was it. And the defenders heard about it, decided to play Ronaldo out. And that was just they it. They didn't get a penalty, so. No penalty, no goals. <laughs> okay. But they still have the second leg. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We can, we can go with that. Ronaldo didn't get a penalty. Now, uh, <laughs> the Champions League is not yet decided as the return legs are set to take course in, I think, one week. One, one week now. time. They do get yeah. a one week break, right? Yeah. And then they yeah. do resume from there. But the Europa League. I'm sorry, bro. The draws are out. <laughs> the draws are out of the Europa League. And, and it's Arsenal quite, is not there. It's quite interesting because uh, <laughs> three English Premier League teams went in and only two came out. Arsenal uh, did make the most of the chances that they had and they lost to Olympiacos 2-1, being That's eliminated home. on goal aggregates. Now, we do have a draw behind me. Now, Manchester United will be meeting LASK, LASK and then Rich Frankfurt will be playing against Basel. Sevilla will be playing against Roma. Istanbul Besiktas will be playing against Copenhagen, while international is, that is Inter Milan will be playing against Getafe. Wolfsburg will be playing against Shakhtar Donetsk and Rangers will be against Leverkusen. Wolves will be welcoming Olympiacos. <laughs> to England to see if they can do better than Arsenal, which I do hope they will. They will, they will. <laughs> but uh, um, I, I, you guys watched the games, I believe. And, um, and I, know, I know one of the games that you really watched was Arsenal, since you haven't stopped telling me about Arsenal. <laughs> but I, 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 I would... <laughs> okay, first of all, Arsenal didn't make the most of the chances, and they, they got what was coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ateta should have made some, some, some different substitutions earlier, but he didn't, and for that, we paid the price. But all in all, I think Arsenal played a good game. And uh, now they can only concentrate on the Premier League and the FA Cup. Because if they do win the FA Cup or do get to the finals, then they get the chance to go to the Europa League again. And if they do win the Premier League, then they get the chance to go to the Champions League. That's the Premier League. You can see the schematics I'm trying to draw here. That's the Premier League. Which You can see the schematics I'm trying to draw here. But then again, top four is not far, but it's not far away out of reach. Uh, it's still within reach for them. I, I do hope they will make the most of that. But, but you just say I'm just listening to you, but I'm just, EPL, I'm just listening. The top four EPL is not far away. It's not far out of reach. Arsenal can't, can't get there. Arsenal can't get there. You can't get there. No, when, when I look at it, uh, we have eleven games to play. Eleven games. That means thirty-three I'll, points. I how many draws? How no. many draws? How many games? How, how many draws are you going to get? Listen, listen, to look. At, listen, here's how I see it. Okay, <laughs> we do have eleven games to play. Mm -hmm. In eleven games, we do have thirty-three points. Mm -hmm. The difference between Chelsea and Arsenal. Why are you picking on Chelsea? Because Chelsea is the current number, number four. four. So, the that. difference between Chelsea mm -hmm. and Arsenal is what? Twenty. Not huh? twenty. It's, it's ten. Nine. Not ten. You tell us then. You tell it's us. nine points. Uh, now that's a whole three, t three that's games. That's three games. For that's Chelsea, a whole that's, three games. Uh, for Chelsea, that's not impossible. <laughs> it's very much possible. <laughs> In, if you would have told me Liverpool or Leicester, I would have been like, okay, yeah. Okay. But for Chelsea. Chelsea, it's very much possible. Okay. I only need six points away from 33 points. I mean, seriously, 33.6 points. But I think United... It's very much possible. Will, now, when I look at Manchester United, Manchester United closer. have four, four or five points ahead of... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Manchester United is one point. Less. Arsenal have 37 points. Mm -hmm. yes. Chelsea 
have 41. Manchester United have 41. 40. Mm -hmm. 40. 40. 40. Chelsea 40. have 41. Manchester United have 40. Mm. Yeah. So that's three points. 41. Yeah. 41. That's four okay. points. That's four points. Yeah. 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 Here we yeah. have the table. Now, Liverpool, let's not talk, we're not talk, yeah. not talk about that. Now, let's go to Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea have 44 points. Okay. Mm. Arsenal have 40. 37 points. That's a difference of what? Three. Ah, you, know, you still have seven points, right? Wow, you still have to climb with hope top ten and what? No, no, listen to me. Oh, this is not seven okay. points between Chelsea and Arsenal. Hmm. Seven points is not a miracle. That's two games. That's just us. two games with a draw. But look at the not the current Arsenal, not the current Arsenal team. Now, let's continue with this one. Now we we had this regarding two teams. Now that's where Sheffield and Tottenham and uh, Sheffield Wolf, are uh, on and Wolves. Fire. And Manchester United. Now, Manchester United mm -hmm. do have a chance also. They have a realistic chance because they're 41 points to it. You know, the funny thing is, Leicester has really tried. We'll get into the Premier League very, 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 very soon. But let's get back to the Champions League, <laughs> oh, the Europa League, where we were discussing about Arsenal defeat and being exited from the Europa League. Now, Arsenal were not the only team that played the Europa League. Manchester United also played the Europa League and they didn't. Very, they did very, very, very well. In fact, they did quite so well that, that, that I actually expected. Uh, for the first time, I actually saw a different Manchester United. I, I, I did watch the replay, I didn't mm -hmm. watch the game, and uh, I, I didn't watch it entirely, yeah. but it was still interesting. Now, <laughs> Manchester United played a very, very, very interesting mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> okay, my producer is talking to me, and he's uh, <laughs> now, you guys, what was the biggest surprise in the Manchester United game yesterday? Um, I was oh. actually liking when they brought in this guy. What's it called? The new, the new striker, Igalo. Igalo. Ah. Yeah, and he, he actually just... Yes, uh, Igalo, 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 Igalo has been... Uh, okay, according, according to, to the coach of uh, Manchester United, mm -hmm. that is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Mm -hmm. He said the reason why he has been resting Igalo for quite a while is he had to give him time to integrate with the squad mm -hmm. before he actually put him out there because Manchester is a very big team. Once he put them there and he cannot handle the pressure, mm -hmm. he cannot handle the pressure and that will be up to him again mm -hmm. to... Yeah. So, to avoid your process and take time before working, but eventually gave but him a yeah, chance. But yeah, he, he and got he proved, a goal. And he proved, and he proved the, the, the fans that he wasn't a waste of a buy. Yeah, he actually or, or waste proved a, a point. I know. He got a goal. Because but it's, but the, the, this club is a, a small club, so Manchester United were lucky. Uh, they should they were lucky. I just feel they should respect football. Five nil, it's just too much. <laughs> Three nil is okay. Then I away. think you should tell that to Bayern next yeah, They should tell that the Bayern because Bayern respected him. Bayern is about to <laughs> kill you. Okay. <laughs> Bayern are in the hub. Now, this one, okay, one thing, don't forget, she's speaking like a Liverpool fan. And, mm -hmm. and, and of course, we, 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 with that, Liverpool did lose as well. So Yeah, you, but... You, you guys are sailing on the same boat, only on different boats. I know. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to Munich, you're going to Anfield. That's, okay. that's, oh, not, that's, that's, the the difference. that's not the same That's the difference. Yeah. You're playing at home. We are but that doesn't mean you're going to yeah. win that game. No, I'm just going happy. to win. I'm just happy that the attention has been taken away from us in the full moment. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, moving on to the Premier League. <laughs> moving on to the Premier League. We do have games that are yet to be played this weekend. And most of them are really, really interesting. But if I could have the table, please. One of the games that I'm really looking forward to is Manchester United versus Everton. Everton. Now, I have a lot of Manchester fans that actually do believe in their they so strongly sure. believe they will defeat Everton. 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 No. Now we have the weekend fixture now on to, okay, today. today we have a game Norwich versus Leicester. Yes. Which is very interesting. Very, very interesting. Oh yes. The, you know yes, I was thinking because I was looking at Norwich and I'm seeing that they're playing on a Friday and I remember that there was another game Norwich played on a Friday and I remember that was with Liverpool. Yeah. yeah. And, and so on an L for Liverpool and L for Leicester and then you can turn mm. it over. But <laughs> now that I'm back, okay. <laughs> Norwich versus Leicester and then we do have Brighton versus Crystal Palace and then Chelsea will be welcoming Bournemouth. Bon 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 at the Stamford Bridge and Newcastle will be taking on Burnley Westham. Oh, well, actually, Chelsea will be away. What you guys should what move, from move from Chelsea. Move from Chelsea. Okay, we move away from Chelsea. <laughs> okay, we have moved. <laughs> West Ham will be playing Southampton, and then what for the playing against Liverpool. Mm -hmm. Now, on Sunday, the 20th, we do have a game against Everton. will be welcoming Manchester United, United. at Liverpool. Yeah. You do know what I've done there. Side. You, you, yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yes. <laughs> and Spurs will be playing against Wolves. Now, this is a very, very favorable result to every, any team that is on the top 10. This game, these two games in particular, actually, let's go talk about the Spurs versus Wolves games. These are two teams that are in the top 10, and there are two teams that are vying for the top four uh, spot. So, you guys, do you, tell me your predictions first. Let's start with the predictions. Uh, 
to those guys who are who, okay yeah. and then there are two matches by the way the two matches that have been confirmed <coughs> to be postponed that is the Aston Villa versus Sheffield United and Man City. Manchester Man City. City versus Arsenal. Arsenal which was supposed to be the game <laughs> of the week now most people are actually happy they were very 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 happy and they actually believed Arsenal is going to lose. <laughs> but Arsenal will lose to Manchester City. It's obvious. It's obvious. Now, with the current Manchester City, I do believe Arsenal no, has a chance. No. Anyone who watches football would actually agree with me. No. But let's just, continue with the, let's just continue with the conversation. We have a team. We have Spurs versus Wolves. This is, these are two teams that are in the top ten mm -hmm. and contains, they're contending for the top four spot. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that one so we can go to the Everton mm -hmm. in the Manchester United one. Mm -hmm. I think Wolves will win. Wolves will win? Yeah. Spurs are really having a very hard time right now. Kane is and out. Is is out. <laughs> and Mourinho is like he's. I think he's. Trust <laughs> me, I yeah. take a side on yeah. this. Yeah. Wolves is winning that game. And, 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 you know, I, 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 it actually makes me wonder. Any team that actually ever employed Mourinho, what were they thinking? Now, <laughs> we, <laughs> to, we have head to head uh, Manchester United versus Everton. Yeah. Now these guys have played a total of 180 <clears throat> matches, 90 in at Old Trafford, 90 at Goodison Park, and three FA. 177 Premier League matches. Total goals scored between these two teams is 522. Manchester United have scored 280. Everton has scored 242. Now the draws. Wow, 44 draws. Manchester United, of course, have won 82, and Everton have won 54. Four draws. And uh, wow, th this is very, this is very interesting. But it, it actually made me remember when Moyes was uh, Everton coach mm -hmm. and uh, Ferguson was Manchester United coach. Oh. Manchester United never won against Everton at Goodison Park. No. Yeah. The truth so is, they're not going I just play. feel if Everton played the way they played last weekend, yeah. against, against, win. Against, against the Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal yeah. trust me, they'll they win that win. game. They will win that game. Yes. Even me, I think there's a high chance. There's a very, very high chance that uh, Manchester United <laughs> will lose this game. But, but. <laughs> Let's but, not forget last year, Manchester United lost 4 0 to against, Everton. Yeah. The same fixture. The same. The same, the same day, so oh, same I day. think yeah, I think Everton got this. Okay, it's okay. between it's just between a husband and a wife. Yeah. They know each other. So here's how I see it. Okay, here's how I see it. If Everton does win against Manchester United and then Spurs and Wolves draw, mm -hmm. what does it say about Arsenal? <laughs> Tafakari <Labo>. Now, as, <laughs> <laughs> as we continue, okay, uh, we don't go to this, but of course we <laughs> do have. Um, my producer is talking to me and he's a Manchester fan and he's actually really, really sh trying the best, his best to shut me down and I will give him way because I'm actually, I'm actually happy enough that Manchester United is going to play the Everton. <laughs> well, we'll be showing the FA Cup uh, on the 3rd and 4th of March. So for you, those who watch the FA Cup, please stay tuned to Y254. We will be showing the match again, I repeat. From us to you, of course, it's goodbye and we'll be bringing you more sports in regards to what happens between today and next Friday. Now, joining me on set has been... Jo uh, Thank you. I am your host, Elio Goy, and from us to you, of course, as usual, is bye bye and hope to see you next Friday. Thank you.